Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Today we are talking about 11 things, 11 things you must do before your next Royal Caribbean cruise. I have it all for you today. We just got off the Harmony of the Seas last week and I have so much to share. If you want to know exactly what you need to do before your cruise, how to avoid mistakes and pitfalls, and also if you want to get expert tips from someone who's been doing this for almost 30 years and keep on watching, I'm here to help you out today. Take a moment, like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell over on YouTube. Listen, today's video, we do a lot of content for two audiences. One, first of all, if you don't know me, my name is Cindy Williams. Welcome to the channel. Type in I'm new if you're new so I can welcome you to the community. But my name is Cindy Williams. I'm known as the Wanderlust CEO, and I'm most known for training and certifying travel agents all over the world. And I also own and operate my own award-winning nationally recognized travel agency. So today this video is those tips that you need to do before your cruise. So if you are a travel agent watching this video, tell your clients to do these things. If you are a person who's about to take a cruise, then that's amazing. I'm gonna tell you the 11 things that you need to do and we're gonna get right into it. I'm so excited to share this content today because I just, like I said, went on Harmony of the Seas and I had not been on a big cruise ship in a long time because my husband was worried like he might get seasickness and I actually have a really bad track record of every time I travel, I usually end up with someone who is seasick. <laughs> so <laughs> we've been a little hesitant, but we jumped on the Harmony of the Seas and it was so much fun. Nobody got sick. It was all glorious. But there's some things that I was reminded of as a lifelong traveler that I was like, wow, if someone was new, I bet they don't know this. Plus with all the changes with COVID and all the things going on, we're gonna cover it all for you today. So I'm gonna go 11, number 11. I tried to fit it into 10, but I just too, I have too much love to share with you today. So number 11, the first thing you wanna do when you book a Royal Caribbean cruise, the minute you book it and you have your reservation number, what we tell our clients to do and what you wanna tell your clients to do or do yourself is download the Royal Caribbean app. Grab your phone, download the app. You'll be able to link your cruise inside there and you can start playing around. You can start seeing some of the excursions. You can look at your itinerary, all of those kind of things that you're going to need to refer to. And as the countdown begins to your cruise, whether it's next summer or it's next week, uh, there's a lot of valuable information you need to know and everything is centralized in the app. So download the app is tip number 11. All right, number 10, the next thing you wanna do is you want to research your cruise itinerary. And if you've been working with a travel agent, maybe they helped you select the perfect itinerary for when you're going. But even if you didn't, you wanna go in and you wanna understand what days am I cruising? What days are we in port? And the reason that's important is because you wanna start thinking about what your schedule is gonna be while you're on the cruise. And you might be like, I'm gonna show up and just you know see how it goes. That's fine, but you might not get your top show selections. You might not get your top dining selections. So if you take a moment to familiarize yourself with your schedule, it really helped me to go, okay, I know I want to go to the spa. I know I want to get an amazing massage, but do I really want to do that on a day that I'm going to port? Probably not, because what if we're having fun and we don't want to come back to the ship as early? So I scheduled my cruise, uh, or my spa bookings, for example, on the days that we were cruising. So you wanna get familiar with the itinerary so you can just make good selections and at least have a loose idea of what you wanna do on each day as you go through the process. The other reason you wanna do that is, I'm gonna roll right into tip number nine is, you wanna start researching those ports so you can then select your excursions. A lot of the excursions sell out before you even get on the ship. We wanted to rent a cabana because we had a, the uh, extra day at Coco Cay, which by the way was fantastic. I'm gonna have other videos on that. We have lots of other videos, by the way, on Harmony of the Sea, so make sure you check those out because we have a ton of great info, um, specifically what we did on the cruise, some of the excursions, and also how the cabana life was. But when I logged in, we booked our cruise maybe four or five months in advance. This was kind of last minute for us. Usually I do them almost a year in advance, but there was only one cabana left. So we literally got the last cabana and we booked it at least three, four months in advance at that point I had booked it. So we were really fortunate that we got that, but you have to know if there's certain things like swimming 
uh, swimming with the, I think they have swimming with pigs. Is that one? I'm pretty sure that that was one that I saw on there. Whatever it was, it was sold out. And then going up in the balloon that they have at the Coco K, that was sold out. So some things that you maybe are watching on YouTube are like, we're going to do that. You don't want to show up and be disappointed. That's why I get familiar with um, what your itinerary is and then get familiar with the excursions, book them ahead of time in the app, ask your travel agent, which ones they think would be best, which ones would be good, especially if you have kids or depending on what your goals are for your vacation, have that conversation because sometimes they might have insider knowledge. Like we did some stuff that I would not do again on this cruise. And I was like, why do we spend money on that? And then on the other ones, I was like, this was worth every penny. I honestly wasn't expecting the cabana day to be as fantastic as it was. That was money well spent. Um, so that's number nine. All right, let's move into number eight. Research your dining options. So one of the things on um, the Oasis class ships and on a lot of cruises, not just Royal Caribbean, they will have the dining that is included, which will be something like the buffet. They had the wind jammer, which is a buffet that you can go certain hours, pretty much any time and get food that you want. Um, I'm not super impressed with that food. We have a whole nother video on the dining. So check that out. And then they have the main dining rooms that is included in your cruise fare. So if you're going to stick with all of the free stuff, you totally can do that. But a lot of people want to go to more of the fine dining, or at least try a couple of the fine dining on the ship for one or two of their meals. What we did, because I mean, we're researching for you guys. So we bought the dining package in advance so we could try all the specialty dining. And I have a video of our top selections, our top three of the ship. So if you're planning on getting the dining package um, or you wanna know which ones are best, check out the other video on that. But you want to research where your money is gonna be best spent because the specialty dining, there is an extra fee that will be applied for specialty dining. So you wanna look at what that fee is and is it worth it for you because it's a per person fee for your family to dine there on a particular evening. So if you are planning on doing a lot of specialty dining, don't wait till last minute and pay all of those fees a la carte. Think about purchasing a dining package. If you're gonna go, I would say, three nights or more on a seven night cruise. We were on a seven night. I would say it's worth it to get the dining package in advance. You get a discount on it and then it's just paid for like it was paid for in advance. So we didn't even feel that. Um, all right, let's get into number seven. So research the shows and activities that you might want to do on the ship. So now that you have an idea of what your itinerary is, like on our particular itinerary, we had three days total that we were cruising. One was the second day that we were on the ship. And then towards the end, we had two days on the way back. Pretty much we went to um, St. Kitts and then we were like, zoop, <laughs> the next two days it was all cruising. So on those last two days, we did a lot of on-ship activities. We did, uh, that's when I did some of my spa retreats and we went to some of the shows. We also got to go to like the comedy club and the jazz club and um oh the art auction you guys oh the art auction was so fun so we're again we have other videos that go into more detail but you want to go into that app and see the different things now i will say they don't actually unlock the exact itinerary of like what time are the shows and what time is the art auction what time is bingo and what time is they actually even had like scrapbooking and like some cool stuff so anyway so there's so many things to do. You're not going to be able to do everything and that's fine, but they don't unlock that in the app until like the day of, or the day before, I think is when we started to see stuff get loaded in. But you want to, again, have that idea, that idea of like, that's when I'm going to book my, my spa reservations. And you can actually book the spa in advance, but that's, that is one I would wait for just on a side note, because when you get on the ship, they have deals. Like if you buy three spa treatments, that's what I did. You get 10% off the lowest, 20% off the middle and 30% off the last one. So of course the last one I did like a 90, 90 minute, hundred minute massage. And I got a good chunk of money off of that. So that was really worth it for me to wait but I booked them immediately when I get out, got on the ship because I knew in my mind I had thought through it. I had gone through this process that I'm giving you today. All right, so hopefully that, that's helpful. All right, let's get into number six. This is a big one, guys. You can't do any of this stuff unless you get number six right. So this is one of those pitfall ones. If you're not working with a travel agent, make sure you know what the heck you're doing. Um, listen, there's so many restrictions right now. If you are vaxxed, if you are not vaxxed, there are different rules based on what your vaccination status is, what you have to do, all of these different things. Let me go through a couple things to be aware of. Um, one, 
and this is changing every day. This literally just changed this week as we're filming this video. Right now, the CDC has some guidelines and then the cruise lines were able to make their own determinations on if they have vaccinated passengers, if they don't. Most of them at the time of the filming of this video, they are doing a certain percentage of unvaccinated people can come on the cruise. You do have to pass a COVID test, obviously, for obvious reasons, but it is a, it's a you, typically a small percentage of 10% or less right now with most cruise lines. So if you are not vaccinated, if that's your personal choice, no judgment, but you need to be aware you should be booking your cruises way in advance because you are competing against a 10% share on that ship of available rooms potentially where they are allowing that many unvaccinated uh, bodies on the ship, right? They literally have it broken down to percentages. So you don't have the same availability that everyone has. So keep that in mind. The other thing that you need to be aware of is, do I need to take a COVID test? Do I not? Do I what, you know, there's different policies. I'll give you a couple examples. If I actually had COVID three weeks before I went on the ship. And so I actually could have printed from my doctor to say, I had COVID within the past certain amount of time and I could have gotten on that way. But because we were filming and making videos, I actually went through the normal process because I wanted to share it with y'all. And we did the process, which at the timing film, that the timing this, this video is being filmed, keep in mind, you need to check the up-to-date if you're watching this video six months from now or beyond. Um, I wanted to go through the process. So we did, we were, our family is vaccinated and we got our COVID tests. You can test uh, as much as two days ahead of time. So you can go through like Walgreens or CVS. They had the tests that would work for a travel perspective. And again, check the current listing to make sure that's still the case. The other cool thing uh, that you can do, and this is number five that I'm going to share with you is schedule those COVID tests. So schedule them uh, or Royal Caribbean, if you're on Royal Caribbean, works with this company called eMed. So I'm gonna share this with you guys here. And eMed allows you, I, I purchased these on the Royal Caribbean app. They were $30 a piece. We actually got a pack of three. And um, you can take the test at home. It takes 15 minutes. I love, so it was extras, like, like I said, it's like 30, 33 bucks a test, or they had like a package for three of them. But why I loved it is I hate waiting for like Walgreens and CVS. So like, am I going to go on vacation? Should I start packing? Like I, when you can only take the test two days in advance and then I'm leaving in two days, like I got to pack sooner than that. So we did the 15 minute test, paid the extra money, documented that process for you guys. It was so easy. And honestly, it was the greatest thing. So get those COVID tests scheduled or get a plan and put it on your calendar to make sure that you're gonna do that in the timeline. They do have some testing available at this time uh, at the port if you don't do it, but it's like a hundred bucks a person. They're not doing it for free anymore. So make sure that you're aware of that. All right, let's talk about number four. Once you uh, book your cruise and as you get closer, at some point you are going to get an email either from your travel agent or from Royal Caribbean directly that says, here are your boarding documents and you're gonna get a giant packet of paperwork you want to review that paperwork for one, you know, that goes through everything, all the information that you need to know, but also inside there are going to be your luggage tags for your luggage. They are literally just pieces of paper that they tell you to fold together and then staple onto your bags. Now, because I am have a little touch of OCD and I'm like a piece of paper for a luggage tag. Nope. I'm not getting my luggage lost. <laughs> What I'm going to give you a trick that I did. I actually took my luggage tags and I literally just took some packing tape and I taped it on each side. So it almost like laminated the tags. Then I folded and stapled them. And boy, I'll tell you guys, those tags lasted the whole cruise on the ship, off the ship. My suitcase actually got cracked in two places, but those luggage tags, they were down for the job that they needed to do. So I would suggest that just because like I said, I don't want to lose my luggage or I don't want to wait extra time for my luggage and our bags got delivered super fast. All right, number three, the minute that you can check in, again, you're going to get an email from your travel agent or for, from Royal Caribbean on when you can check in, check in and select the earliest 
port time you can get. You paid a lot of money for your cruise. Get on the ship as soon as you can. So you want to select that early boarding time, get to the port early, get on the ship as soon as possible, start having fun, enjoy your vacation. But in order to do that, you have to check in when they send you that email. Once you check in, you also want to pre-register. You'll be able to load up your information, your vaccination information, a picture of yourself. It makes the check-in process so much faster. I have another video because we did, we stayed in the suites. And so the difference between kind of regular cabins versus staying in a suite Oh my gosh, you guys, we had done all the stuff I'm telling you on this video. Plus we were staying in the suites. It literally took us less than 17, 18 minutes from the time we landed in Port Canaveral to get all the way on the ship and on our way up to lunch. So it just helped so, so much. So tips on that in another video as well. Um, all right. Number two, packing tip. You guys, if you haven't been on a cruise before, please don't overpack. I know they scare you with all this dress code. I go into that in my top 10 uh, tips video for uh, how to have the best time ever on, on the Harmony. Um, we were super overdressed. I packed way too many things and I was like, I didn't wear half the stuff that I brought. So don't overpack. Watch my other video on that process. And the other thing I want to give you packing tip wise is bring a carry on. The minute you're on the ship, the cabins aren't ready yet. It usually takes an hour or two before the cabins are going to be ready. But once you go through your muster drill, you can do that all online on your phone. Once you do that, you can head to the pool. You can head to the pool deck. You can start reading your book. You can throw your bathing suit on if you have that stuff with you. So I always carry a cute little over the shoulder bag. I have my bathing suit in there. I have my little book and I'm like, I'm on the minute I'm on the ship. I'm like, give me a drink. Let's, let's have, let's lay out and have, have some time and have a good vacation. So bring that carry on with anything that you need. Also put obviously all your paperwork in there, any medications that you might need, sunglasses, all that stuff that, you know, if there's a delay in your suitcases for a few hours, you are going to have that stuff with you. All right. And my number one tip, you guys, this is the most important thing. There are a lot of levels of complication to a cruise. And we're just going through some Royal Caribbean tips today. And some of the things I've given you are also valid for other cruise lines as well. There are a ton of cruise lines. There's a ton of itineraries, a ton of things to know. Um, ship life is different than your typical vacation. Number one thing you guys should be doing, please use a travel agent. Even if you aren't using our agency, that's totally fine. Honestly, we have, we're, we're pretty booked in terms of <laughs> our agency, but use a travel agent that you get to know, love, and trust, who knows your family, knows what you love, and it not only supports our industry, they are gonna help you get the most value possible out of every vacation that you take. Always a tip when you are looking for an amazing uh, travel advisor that I wanna give you, make sure that they are careers on vacation certified. This is the emblem that you're looking for, that beautiful globe, that's what you're looking for. Careers on Vacation Certified Travel Agent. A lot of times they'll have that badge on their Facebook banner or somewhere on their website as well. That's how you can tell that they have been trained and educated and they are ready to help you have the most amazing vacation. So guys, I hope this was a super helpful video for you. Um, we love bringing you all the content about cruises and all of the good stuff. If you'd like to check our travel agency out, feel free to go to traveltripsy.com or if you wanna just check out what it's like to be a travel agent or you've been thinking about becoming a travel agent, don't forget I run one of the biggest travel schools in the world to certify new travel agents. It's called Careers on Vacation and you can visit us at travelschool.com if you'd like to learn more about that. And no matter what, make sure you guys are following over on Instagram. That's where I document all of our travels, the behind the scenes of what it's like I call it the secret lives of travel agents and all of the things that we're sharing. And I'm constantly sharing tips about travel, things that you need to know, things that are going to help you on your vacations. This is my passion. And this has been my, my life's work is not just being in the travel industry, but having this outreach to consumers and travel agents to help everybody have the most fun on vacation. So guys, I will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching today. I wish you so much love. I'll see you out there in the world. Hey guys, Cindy Williams here. If you liked that last video, make sure you check out all of the other content on our channel. And if you want to follow along and travel with me around the world and see how I run my amazing travel brands and get some great tips on how to grow your own, make sure you check out that other content. I'm going to drop a couple videos here. Click those links. I'll see you next time. Bye guys. <laughs>